Hello, everyone. This is de facto review with me, Jargal Tampadarja. We highlight three important events happened in Mongolia last week and share our opinion on these three issues, three topics. This time we have selected three topics. One, flooding everywhere in Mongolia. Second, English is in the law now. Third, political parties' law is adopted. First topic about the flood. If you are in Ulaanbaatar, you can see everywhere flood. Water all around. In particular, on the two banks of uh, Silbe River, which runs from the north uh, to the south, all the way goes to the center of Ulaanbaatar, turning right, and then the name is... Uh, or Middle River, then at the outskirts and the western part of the city, it uh, comes, it joins Toll River. Silver River is uh, famous for strong flooding, once uh, maybe every 20 years or so, and that's what's happening now. Thousands of apartments, their basements, uh, in the basements usually many cars, also we have lost a lot properties, damaged properties. People escaped, not proper information where are there, but they have been moving or helping to move from the water flooded area. And they say it is, the reason is also uh, not only the flood itself, but there are many small bridges were made on the Silver River without any proper estimation and designs according to uh, the professionals. So what happened? Why is that happening in, in, in Mongolia, in Ulaanbaatar? By the way, not only the Silber River, Ulyaste River, another river on the eastern side of the Ulaanbaatar city is also flooding. And if the toll is a flood, the major river is a flooding, then it will be even more problem in Ulaanbaatar city. What is the reason? It's, of course, uh, water. It's uh, unusual rainfall now this year. Uh, the other thing is that the dams made after 1966 flood are not properly maintained, not properly protected, not, not properly renewed, and they were supposed to extend this dam to the northern part of the city, where people are to the northern valley, where many people have so-called summer houses, small wooden houses, and many of them were flat, uh, flooding already, uh, floating on the, on the river. Uh, that's the first reason. Uh, second reason is uh, illegal construction, not proper urban planning or its implementation. It is not only a river flood, it's a corruption flood in a way. And that's what the people who have been talking, criticizing for years, but still the Ulaanbaatar city, the managers, heads, were given uh, illegal, illegally land permission even to such an extent that one uh, individual uh, company even uh, cut off that old dam, extended the land, made their own dam, which was busted. And which, by the way, because it had narrowed the flow of the river, it was one of the main reasons why in front of, before water coming to that place, it's uh, Sun Road, the flood first over over the surface, over the dam on two sides, which was the main reason. At two o'clock at night, the people started to uh, evacuate their cars from the basement, uh, those who could hear and who, who could do it, but many could not do it. So many cars are damaged and floating in, in the water in their basement. The third is a concentration of population. Uh, major uh, migration of people from countryside to Ulaanbaatar, which really extending the Ulaanbaatar city uh, without any proper planning, of course. And many people were coming to the, uh, close to the uh, river dams. That's why we have more losses now of damages of property. So far, no uh, casualties are reported. The other thing uh, shows that there is a no flood warning system in Ulaanbaatar. They, they only recognized when the water was already coming to the basements of many houses at night. So these are the reasons of this uh, terrible flood in Ulaanbaatar city. So what is next? First of all, we need 
to implement that flood protection plan by 2040. Turned out there is a, such a plan. The truth is they have forgotten that plan. We need now to clean and renew infrastructure. Also, we need to check and estimate damage and learn on basement cracks. So whether these cracks are dangerous for further strength of the basement of these buildings, we need proper estimation of that. And certainly we should have penalty for all our wrongdoings. First of all, those who had uh, really constructed buildings uh, on the, where the river is supposed to be uh, flowing. And it opens many other areas where we have on the bank of, for example, Tool River, many even districts, brand new districts. Unfortunately, those may, may face big uh, risk. And lastly, Mongolia is to take over, to think over again about insurance system. Those cars, if they have a, a risk insurance, they may have 5,000 MNT for their cars, according to the insurance professionals, those who are insured. But many are not insured from this kind of risk. So we need to develop insurance system in a such a way that they participate not only after, uh, after any cases, but before protecting this kind of uh, emergencies. These are the lessons from, the, uh, from this flat. English as a basic learning language in Mongolia is now in the law. We had uh, last two, three weeks of serious debate among politicians, among uh, the parliament members and among people about the language, English language being inside of the law particular saying English is to be the learning basic language of Mongolia. It caused a lot of uh, uh, debates, like many cases before, because we have been talking about this since 2008, having English as even as official foreign language of Mongolia. Of course, um, some people didn't like it, they said the priority to be our neighbor languages, for example, Russian, etc. But uh, at the end, 79% of uh, parliamentarians who were at the discussion sessions, plenary sessions, have approved the new provision in the law, in spite of the previous debates and many challenges. Now, Mongol, it, it said the provision says that the learning language of Mongolia, educational learning language of Mongolia to be Mongolian or official uh, national language. And the basic foreign language is to be English. It doesn't, mean, it doesn't stop the other languages to be learned. That's the provision in, in my very rough translation. So why is it so important? Of course, English is the language of uh, science, technology, and is more becoming dominant and dominant. And the, the, our neighbor countries and other, other countries are also learning English as, a, uh, as their best to be a part of that social progress. So no doubt that part everybody knows. You know, because it was not in the law before, it was slowly disappearing that enthusiasm to learn English. Now when it is in the law, then it is obligatory to teach in English the the, the education to the children, which make more, I would say, more energetic whole nation. And I think sooner English is to be really the basic foreign language of the country. Of course, it doesn't stop people learning other languages like in any country. Japanese, Korean, Russian, Chinese, they will learn. But all of them should know first English now, which I find would be a great uh, step towards having dual language, being dual language, Mongolian English language, nation like Singapore or Hong Kong. Even there are three in four language nations, there are like Netherlands, Switzerland. So it will be a substantial step forward to progress in the country. Today's third topic is about the new law or amended law, amended law on political parties in Mongolia. This law about the political parties is finally adopted after 18 years. 
every time after election or before election, each political party were promising to amend that law. Because that law provides not enough framework to see the political parties as, as an institution to connect people and state. In Mongolia, there are 37 parties now, but dominantly only one political party is ruling for the country for quite some time already. Since political parties have been financed by the state budget, partially, uh, they had certain estimation what would be the money to give to each seat or each vote. There was a for one seat of the political party, there was estimation of 1,000 MNT. Now it is becoming 3,850 MNT for one vote. Well, they have just estimated the exchange rate. At that time, when they have started to use 2012, no, 2012, the Tugri dollar rate was 1,000. Now, it's 3,500, so they are put now 3,850 MNT per seat, per vote, sorry. So uh, that, what does it mean? Uh, that means uh, for one seat of the parliament they have been receiving, when it was a 1,000, 10 million MNT per seat, or a parliament member got 10 million MNT per year, half of which he is supposed to spend for operation in his or her constituency. That was the condition. And the total uh, money spent for political party was around 5 billion MNT before. But now, plus we have now 126 seats instead of 70 seats. And it will be around 8 billion MNT per year for a party. The other thing was uh, 4% of votes make only the door of parliament open to the particular candidate or to a to particular party. So the party, so 4% of votes opens the door to the parliament. 1% of votes or total voters, say 1,500, suppose that 1 1.5 million people uh, vote, then 1% would be uh, around 1,500 multiplied by this 3,850, it will be a 5.7 billion. That would be the money received by uh, politicians. Another new provisions of this new law, amended the law, is about donation to the political party. An individual can donate up to 6.6 .6 million MNT to a legal entity or companies. They would up to 27 million MNT, that the ceiling of the donation by an individual or a, um, a legal entity. The major issue with the political parties were financing and their monitoring. This time they changed a bit the subject, uh, who will control or monitor political parties' financing. It was the Supreme Court before, according to the previous law. Now it will be run by the General Election Commission. That's another good step forward. And that General Election Committee will be also uh, monitoring and distributing the money which comes from the state. Of course, at certain conditions that the political party meets other requirements for transparency. According to this new amended law, Parties' income and expenses uh, will be made transparent and for the, for the public as well. And political party is to report annually their income statement, income and expenses. If a political party is not doing that for two years in a row, that party will not be able to run for next election. Well, this kind of long-weighted amendments are there. But one is thing in Mongolia is a law. The other thing is its enforcement. Not fake enforcement, but serious enforcement of these laws. If they are seriously enforced, I believe it will be a substantial step forward to make corruption in Mongolia less, as political parties are the main source of corruption. 
So would, will it be enough to uh, have a transparent political parties? Of course not. It depends on participation of uh, voters, of ordinary citizens to demand, demand transparency of the political parties financing, campaign financing, and through them the expenses of the government. So let's see what will happen in Mongolia. If it happens, that would be great. So these are three topics I would want to share with you this week. Uh, namely, this is uh, flooding is everywhere. English as a foreign learning language is in the law now. Third, Mongolian political parties supposed to be a, for, uh, a one step up in terms of financing and its reporting according to new amendments of political parties law. Thank you very much for being with us. See you next week.